Hey there, Heather, hello there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Degrassiism. And as you can see, something's different. Yes, that's right. Now you're seeing more of my basement because my Logitech C170 webcam had some issues. Well, it was the microphone that had the issues, but I decided to change myself. I had planned this actually for this year and with some birthday money, I bought a new Logitech webcam. I know it's not the professionals and all that that the gaming professionals use, like the Twitch streamers use, but I'm not a Twitch streamer. I'm just a basic average guy who has a job working 30 hours a day. I mean, 30 hours a week. So yeah, so I'll be sprucing up my um, my areas with some stuff. Probably to probably just go on a shopping spree and pick up some new uh, toys and all that. But anyway, that's just, this is the first er video of the new era. Now, on Degrassi Reddit, I posted a couple of things about doing some some posts on the best and worst Degrassi friendships. This is the top 10 best Degrassi friendships. And I said that one per character and it cannot be a relationship. So basically, you know, boyfriend, best boyfriend, girlfriend combination doesn't count. It has to be friendships. The power of friendship, the My Little Trump pony trope. So I did 10. I did two mini polls this week. And of course, this is April 29, 2023 for context. And what happened is there were two polls of five. Well, I actually did a Reddit post saying what type of friendships, who's the best friendship. So I got 10 of them and I made two polls of five. The top three from each poll would move on to the final six to be ranked. And then we got from seven to 10. But I decided to do it a little differently this time. The numbers from 7 to 10 would be ranked based on my personal preference. So basically, I rank the bottom half of the list, and then the Redditors get the power for the top half. So here we go. All right. So number 10 on the list is Ellie and Jimmy, basically season 5. So this friendship was crazy because, you know, Jimmy was just coming out of being in his wheelchair, and Ellie was still was getting over the loss of Craig and getting over a few things. You know, she still had her problems. She needed the elastic band. But Jimmy and Ellie were coming close to being an artist. And Ellie basically told Jimmy to embrace his inner art and all that. So Jimmy paints Ellie or a girl that looks like Ellie on, on a Degrassi mural. And Hazel basically puts two and two together and says, I know you're chicken to say it, but I'm not. We'll break up. So Jimmy and... Hazel, a great relationship ended because of Hazel thinking Jimmy was cheating on her with Ellie. But Jimmy was emotionally cheating on Hazel with Ellie, not physically. So, yeah, Jimmy had bad luck. And unfortunately, Jimmy and Ellie were not meant to be. Okay, number nine on the list. Hopefully I did this right with the fingers. Yeah, number nine is Caitlin Spike from the Degrassi OG era. So, I kind of liked Spike and Caitlin, you know, getting together, you know, two different personalities and, you know, Caitlin's the outspoken one who failed to make things happen, try to make the differential. Basically, the the way Emma is. Like, Caitlin was basically the muse for Emma. And Spike, you know, ironically having Emma as a teen mom. And, you know, Spike trying to get through the pitfalls of life with a single child and her, and her baby daddy not really getting involved. Well, she didn't really want him to be involved in the first place. But still... It was just, like, pathetic. But, yeah, Caitlin and Spike were good friends, and they were around in the Degrassi era, like the NG era from seasons one to three. Because Caitlin, Caitlin told Emma to go after Jordan, not realizing that Jordan was texting, talking to her online and was a middle-aged man. Of course, Emma didn't know that either. But Caitlin threw Spike a great baby shower in season three, in which Emma almost ruins it. And... Emma wants to tell, ask Caitlin about Shane, but Caitlin says, I don't think your mom wants to talk about it. She's entitled to her own privacy. But yeah, it was a good one. Number eight on the list is Becky, the Becky and Imogen friendship. Now, it's a bit messy because Adam was with both of them in season 13 before he, well, season, end of season 12, early season 13 before he died in that texting and driving thing. There were so many ways you could have gotten rid of Adam and you did texting and driving, Blech. But anyway, yeah, Becky was this straight up Christian girl who 
you know, was being annoying, and everyone compared her to Darcy, you know, being all high and mighty and holy, if you will. And Imogen was this girl who was struggling with her sexuality and all that. She tried to date guys. She ended, ended up with a couple of lesbian relationships, first with Fiona and then with Jack. Fiona's was pretty good. It, Jack, not so much. But the simple fact was that, you know, Becky and Imogen were close. And, you know, Adam was with Imogen, but then he was going to tell Becky she's the one for him. And then he ends up dying. And, you know, Imogen is torn. Should she, should she tell Becky about her and Adam or should leave it there? And Imogen left it. I think Becky would have forgave Imogen. All right, so number seven on the list is Mia and Jane. Of season eight. Now, Mia, of course, was the girl involved in season six with having JT be around her and her two-year-old Isabella. And, you know, JT getting stabbed by Lake Hurst and Mia feeling upset because her former school stabbed JT. And basically, you know, Nick, who was Mia's ex before Lucas, and, you know, Lucas was uh, Isabella's baby daddy, basically, you know, made the things. And I did do an unpopular opinion. Was Nick in, was Nick connected with getting Johnny DeMarco and Drake Lampley to, to cause trouble for JT? Probably not to kill him, but to cause trouble. That's probably why Nick was not brought in as a character. I think Nick may have been found out and may have had some troubles, and Johnny may have, you know, got narked on them. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so Jane, ironically enough, would be in fault because Jane was Lucas' sister. Well, she was Anastasia Filari, but changed her name to Jane Vaughn because she didn't want anything to do with Lucas. I mean, Lucas was a terrible baby daddy to Isabella who didn't want the kid. Stupid. But anyway, yeah, me and Jane kind of bonded towards, you know, their hate for Lucas, in a sense. But yeah, it was a tight friendship to be had, and I feel that, you know, they were close and all that. All right, so now, all right, so number six on the list is Anya and Riley from season 11, 12-ish. This is the era I wasn't really watching Degrassi, so I don't know much. But I know that Anya was just off being dumped off by Sav for his arranged bride, trying to get with Sav, but Sav didn't want to be with her. And Riley was trying to stay straight for his mother's sake and all that, even though that he had feelings for Sane. But Riley would mess it up with his anger and all that shit. So, yeah, Anya and Riley were decent friendships. But unfortunately, Anya would then turn destructive and go with Dr. Chris before going to the army, and Riley, well, was really written off. Now, you kind of can notice that I didn't say, well, what number, how many votes they got in the final poll. Well, for one simple reason. Because of how I saw Anya and Riley just eke out a spot in the top six, I'm thinking to myself, they're definitely not going to be, they're definitely sixth. So I decided to put them six and make a top five poll. All right, so the top five poll had 247 votes. And there was a clear fifth place. Actually, there was a tight race for second place. So anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Number five on the list with 13 votes was Manny and Darcy from season seven. Now, Manny and Darcy were both part of the power squad or the, the cheer squad. And, you know, they both were competing cheerleaders and all that. Darcy was decent as a cheerleader. And all that, despite her problems in season six being with Peter. And why was Darcy forgiving of Peter for sending her pictures to Adams? But yeah, Manny was there in season seven in her blonde face. Blech. But anyway, Manny and Darcy and Peter go to a ski weekend in season seven's premiere. So they do that, but unfortunately, Darcy gets date raped and all that, and well, gets roofied, I mean. And Darcy starts to fall off the rails because she learns that some guy was spiking drinks and then she was victimized and she probably will never find out who did it. And of course we never did. But the simple fact was that, you know, Joey and all them knew it. But anyway, the fact of the matter was that Manny and Darcy was that Manny was trying to help Darcy out through her self-loathing thing season seven. She saw Darcy slit her wrists in the shower and all that 
but manages to get Darcy to the hospital. And Manny has to explain what doesn't that she doesn't understand why Darcy would try to slit slit her wrist. But of course, you know, Darcy would never find her uh, tormentor. So all that. And then Darcy, after getting Simpson in trouble and getting sus him suspended and Emma blowing a gasket at her, rightfully so, Darcy decides to go onto the roof and jump off the roof. But thankfully, M Manny saves Darcy from exploding and all that. Manny tells Darcy she has to tell everyone about the false accusations and the rape and all that. Because if Darcy doesn't, then Manny will. Darcy ends up doing so and tells Snake everything. Snake says that, you know, even though that you went to the red 40s, they probably might think I said something, so I can't be cleared. But yeah, Maddie helped Darcy out with her problems and all that. Darcy went to that brat camp alongside Peter and became a better woman. Good for them. I like that relationship, though, too. All right, number four with 48 votes was the one I voted for because, you know, I have to vote to get the results. And it was the triangle that was Joey, Wheels, and Snake from the OG era. I kind of liked it. They were tight and all that. They had their ups and downs. But yeah, Joey, Wheels, and Snake were the popular crowd in a sense. Joey was the troublemaker who never seemed to grow up like Peter Pan, but grew up later on in Degrassi High and all that. Snake was the overachiever, although we don't see it, and the guy who was unlucky in love. And Wheels was the guy who was basically the third wheel that his adoptive parents did not like Joey at all. I mean, Snake, they did. I think they had no problems with Snake, but they didn't want Wheels and Joey to hang out with each other. Of course, there was that one episode of Junior High in which Wheels actually hangs out with Joey and Snake at it. At it. Well, Joey and Snake came to Wheels' his house for a sleepover because Wheels' parents were out, and Wheels needed to go to an eye appointment, and Joey steals... No, that was at Snake's parents place and Joey steals Snake's dad's car and accidentally puts a dent in it and has to raise money to try to clean up the dent but then it was found out that the dent was there by Snake's dad and they actually fixed it. Wills is not allowed to be anywhere near Joey and Snake and all that. The parents try to say that they're bad for each other. Of course Wills falls off the rails when he you know goes over to Joey's one day behind his parents' back, but then his adopted parents die in an accident, and Wills' grandmother tells him the terrible news, and Wills falls flat. Of course, school's out is when things really were bad with the three, especially with Snake realizing that Wills is drinking hard and all that, that he's going to hurt himself, even though that Wills said he wasn't going to drink much because, you know, his parents died by a drunk driver, but yeah. And then Joey, you know, the problems with Caitlin and Tessa, Snake was not too pleased about it, and out of Joey. Snake had the right to out Joey to Caitlin about his cheating, about that triangle. But yeah, I think they were a good trio. Unfortunately, though, Wheels decides to drive drunk while helping Lucy get some chips and then crashes into a car, kills a two-year-old, and is thrown in jail for a long time. Snake feels that Wheels got lucky with only serving nine years in jail or whatever. But Wheels comes back to Degrassi in season one in the first ever episode of Next Gen. Of course, in the U.S., it's a deleted scene at first, I think. And then Wheels apologizes to Lucy for his reactions and said he's paid his debt to society. And Lucy said, I actually believe him. And then, you know, Joey, after hearing about Snake and his chemo problem, leukemia problems in season three, brings Wheels around for a bowling thing. And Snake is not too happy about it. But Wheels tells Snake, you know, I went to jail for killing a two-year-old. I all, I wanted to kill myself. You shouldn't. And then, you know, they all hang out and do the everybody wants something. You never give up. Da, 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 da. That was a good relationship. Number three with 59 votes was Eli and Adam. I don't know, like, the extent of it. I think maybe from season 10 till Adam dies in season 13. But yeah, Eli and Adam were a great relationship friendship and all that. You know, Adam coming in the episode, My Body is a Cage. I thought it was Honey, but no. It's My Body is a Cage. You know, Adam coming out transgender and all that. A female that wanted to be a male against his mother's wishes. That being Audra, Mama Bear, if you want to fucking call her that. Or Karen. I don't care what you call her. Just don't call her a piece of shit because she wasn't completely a piece of shit. She just let herself get herself. Regardless. So, 
Adam tells Eli and Claire about the fact that she may he may be born a female, but he's a male at heart and dresses like a male and likes girls, so he's straight. And Eli says, cool. Claire doesn't have a fit, even though that Claire was painted as probably Darcy's predecessor. I mean, Dar Claire was Darcy's sister, and Claire you know, was supposed to be holier than foul, but after her parents' divorce, she stopped being a pain in the ass. In that way, obviously. But yeah, Eli and Adam, Eli says, you won't be upset if I rip one off, like a fart off in your face. And Adam says, Eli, I would be insulted if he hadn't. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And number two, just beating up Eli and Adam with 60 votes was Holly J. Fiona season 10 and 11. So Holly J was not really the best with friendships. And yes, one of Holly J's terrible friendships will be on this list. Will be on the worst 10 grassy friendships list. I think that uh, of the top five, Manny's involved with one of the worst. Um, well, Holly, and yeah, Manny's also there. But anyway, Holly J and Fiona. Um, we're good friends and all that. Now, it was a weird story because Holly J actually had her family lose some money and she had to be dirt poor and all that or something like that. Well, she called it dirt poor. And then for some reason, Fiona decided to give her money. And I think Declan did too. It's basically tying Holly J to Fiona in a way you know, friendship. But, you know, Fiona was struggling with her sexuality, you know, after Bobby got her and uh, Bobby assaulted her and then Fiona was drinking all the time, but almost became an unreliable witness, but Bobby got in trouble and then Fiona had struggled with her addictions. Then Holly J ended up having a kind of redemption arc, if you will, but, you know, with her kidney. Like, she found out that she was adopted and her birth mother could give her a kidney, but she wants $20,000 for it. And Holly J's like, why? And then Holly J's mom basically says that, you know, I have to recover for six months. I have two kids. What am I going to do? And all that. Can't do too much. And Holly J says, gee, you gave me up because of lack of funds. You didn't learn your lesson. Now, Holly J had a right to blow off at her mom. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but, you know, yeah. But if you want to add actually comes through with $20,000 to get Holly J her kidney and all that. And then I guess Fiona in a sense basically says that she was friends with Holly J because of the money and all that. So Holly J got her kidney. Fiona ha had feelings for Holly J but never told Holly J that she had feelings for her. So yeah. That was a good relationship. But number one with 67 votes out of the 247 was Craig and Marco from season 2 and 3. Now, of course, I didn't really tie into the Craig and Marco friendship. But anyway, so I'm going to use my, um, I'm just going to, do this and see the Craig Marco, ah, fuck, I can't, there we go, Craig Marco friendship. I just want to read the Cliff's notes of it. Season. Well, from season two to season eight. Ah, so they were close. Okay, so they became best friends as the season progressed. They were in downtown Sasquatch together, which included Jimmy Spinner and later Ellie. You know, Marco was upset when Craig used Ellie as an attempt to att continue his drug habit, which was straight into friendship. But Craig helped Marco to save Ellie's life. Okay, so that's basically the giant overview of that and all that. Both friends with Ellie. Um, yep, so, yeah. You know, they both had father issues. Ah, okay. So, yeah. They both considered each other best friends and all that, but yeah, two key moments happened. The so first key moment was in season, yeah, Marco's dad wasn't too sure about Marco coming out of the closet, you know, it's kind of the Italian stereotype, the European stereotype, but still it was huge. And then, of course, you also got the fact with um, Craig's dad, you know, beating him for almost no damn reason. 
But yeah, they were a good partnership with each other. So that looked pretty good. And then, you know. Yeah, they had those bobits and all that. Part of the band. And then, of course, let's not forget Degrassi Goes Hollywood. In one of the plot well, subplots. We all know about many plot being one of the big ones. But the sa fact was that Ellie was actually in connection with Craig. You know, she goes to Hollywood with, I mean, Ellie goes with Craig and Marco, and then finds out that Craig has a girlfriend, and Ellie is so distraught, she decides to walk into the Pacific Ocean, but thankfully Marco and Craig save her butt. So yeah, so Craig and Marco's friendship, do you think I'm going to do a unpopular opinion saying that it's not the best friendship ever? Considering how, you know, I didn't really have a clear number one in mind, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to accept Craig and Marco as the best friendship. Fight me on it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.